Now, during the Trump administration, U.S. private sector involvement in Africa grew significantly. Initiatives such as Prosper Africa were developed to strengthen bilateral trade and investment with African nations, while institutions such as the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation directed funding towards Africa. Consequently, Africa is the second largest recipient of U.S. investment following Latin America. Now, with the current administration, the African continent is expected to continue to be at the forefront of the U.S. investment agenda, particularly when it comes to energy development and cooperation. Under President Biden, the U.S. is once again working towards an energy transition. The nation has recommitted to the Paris Agreement and has pledged to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. Now, this provides another area of collaboration between the U.S. and Africa via green business. And let's now hear from Louis Yao Aful, the executive director of the African Continental Free Trade Area Policy Network in Ghana. He says that Africa's Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is likely to impact future engagements with foreign nations, especially the U.S. The Biden administration would like to continue that of the Obama's administration of engaging Africa. And so the only difference is that now they are, support, they are going to compete with China for what influences Africa in terms of resources. And so fortunately for Africa, we now have a single market or a single concessionary free trade area where we are boosting intra-African trade. Therefore, there will not be any agreement outside Africa towards Africa that will not be to the benefit of all party states. It is those parties, it is all those members under the continental free trade who are not yet full members that might uh, maybe, I would say, will be vulnerable to any kind of multilateral agreement that will not be beneficial to uh, 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 the cost of implementing the continental free trade. So yes, Biden's administration will like to focus on how to uh, establish previous uh, trade agreements that were done under the Obama administration. Basically, he would like to continue some of what Trump did. Forget not that U.S. is focused on interests. And so interest is the key that is going to drive the U.S. I'm saying as of now, they have not yet given a kind of approval. I only say approval. They've not shown interest uh, in terms of really recognizing the continental free trade. And they would like to go um, um, having multilateral agreements with various countries. But Africa is standing up now. Africa have told the United States and Europe that it is going as a single block. And therefore, any existing or new agreement or trade negotiations or agreement with the US will not have to affect the preferential area. So what that means is that if the US want to trade with Kenya, whatever agreement they will have, well, the concessions, Kenya cannot grant any concessions far better than what he has granted to its member states in Africa. The same way if Ghana is going to have any multilateral agreement with the U.S., he is not going to grant any concessions far better than any he will grant to a member state. However, any agreement that has to do with the products, trade, in terms of product supply, export, whatever it is, whatever product that is coming into Africa will attract tariffs if it's not a member within a preferential uh, treat, uh, treatment.